join me in the call to worship. As we come and worship, we proclaim God's ways of faithfulness and steadfast love. For we are God's people, rejoicing in God's graciousness. We know that God is always with us, and there is nothing which can keep us apart. So let us come to the one who tells stories as we stand on the solid rock, worshiping our God who stands behind us. Grace, loving God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the gifts that you bring to each and every one of us. As we live in this world of pandemic and crisis, be with us as we continue to forge forward in our daily lives. But now be with us now through your son, Jesus the Christ, as we worship through your son to you. Amen. Good morning and welcome to online worship at Milwaukee Metropolitan Community Church on this wonderful Sunday morning. So much has been going on in the life of this congregation, even though that we haven't been physically in the building. Our renovations continue to happen throughout the building as we are taking things and bringing them to date and modernizing a little bit, also recovering from the vandalism that we had back in March. But we miss you and um, we extend our greeting to you to send us a greeting. Um, as we mentioned last week, and it was in the weekly, that send us a sentence or two of passing the peace, a greeting, or just something that you'd like to share to your fellow congregants. You can send them to our info at milmcc.org email, and hopefully in the next couple of weeks we can start incorporating them into worship and sharing your messages and your passing of the peace with one another. Also, Mark your calendars for August the 2nd at 12 noon Central Time. Join us via Zoom. We'll have the links available um, as we get closer, but come and join us for a virtual hour of fellowship after online worship that Sunday. Come and be a part of the congregation and see people virtually and have some time. Bring your coffee and your or your brunch or whatever, but join us and have a conversation with us on August the 2nd. I also remind you that if you haven't already done so this morning, maybe to go get whatever elements you bring to the table for communion, what you 
believe your communion is. It could be coffee and a Danish, it could be anything. But we invite you to maybe go get that and have it ready so when we do have communion, you can take part with that. But now as we continue with the worship this morning, as we are on God's solid rock, let us hear God's word. Our epistle lesson this morning comes from Romans, chapter 8, verses 26 through 30, taken from the Inclusive Bible. The Spirit, too, comes to help us in our weakness, for we don't know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit expresses our plea with groanings too deep for words. And God, who knows everything in our hearts, knows perfectly well what the Spirit is saying because her intercessions for God's holy people are made according to the mind of God. We know that God makes everything work together for the good of those who love God and have been called according to God's purpose. They are the ones God chose long ago, predestined to share the image of the only begotten in order that Christ might be the firstborn of many. Those God predestined have likewise been called. Those God called have also been justified. And those God justified have, in turn, been glorified. May God bless the hearing of these words. Our Gospel lesson this morning comes from Matthew, chapter 24, verses 3 through 14, taken from the Inclusive Bible. As Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples approached him privately and asked, Tell us, when will this happen? What will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? Jesus replied to them, Make sure that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Messiah, and they will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumor of more wars. Don't be alarmed, for these things must happen. But that does not mean it's the end. For nation will war against nation, and empire against empire. There will be famines and earthquakes all over the world, yet all of these are only the beginning of the labor pains. Then they will hand you over to be tortured and executed, and you will be despised by all nations because of my name. At that time, many will lose their faith, and they will betray and hate one another. Many false prophets will rise up to deceive you. Lawlessness will increase, and people's love will grow old. But those who persevere to the end will be saved. The good news of the dominion will be proclaimed to the whole world as a witness to all nations. Then the end will come. Hear what the Spirit says today. 
Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's come to prayer with me this morning. Gracious, loving God, as we come to you this morning, we know that we are just one part of what makes us a part of this upside down world. But as a congregation, you continue to give us strength as we come together virtually and as we come together through your spirit each and every week. But we give you praise and thanksgiving that all that you give and how you have woven us and kept us together through these times. So I ask now, God, that you would touch my lips of clay, mold them into the words that need to be spoken this morning, and the words that come from my mouth, along with the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, let them ever be acceptable to you. In Christ we pray. Amen. So this morning we begin a new sermon series here at Milwaukee Metropolitan Community Church that we've titled The World Upside Down. And I'm sure you're all aware that we continue gathering together worship through worship virtually that until such a time that we can come back together in person that we can't until we have a healthy and safe environment. But we titled this series, The World Upside Down, because right now we're in the middle of this season of pandemic and that all of the recent events that have challenged so much of what we thought was going to be certain. I don't think that any of us ever thought that nearly four months later we would still be in the scenario of uncertainty in our lives. But in the midst of all this uncertainty and, and fear, I wanted to bring to the table this special gift of who we are and the role that we play through the gifts of God. I'm sure that God created this to be a significant time in all of our lives and that we just don't know what that significance is just yet. But if we compare this all to the early church's commitment to the gospel, that in times like these, others had stated that these are the men and women that have turned the world upside down. And that in these upside down times, the gospel can also shine more brightly than ever before. So we start this series where we heard in the gospel lesson this morning that Jesus is on the Mount of Olives with the disciples. And here they are in this heavy conversation about the nations will rise again and the dominions will rise again over dominions and that there will be famines and earthquakes and they're all compared to birth pains. Now, I need to be clear and on the level here that no one is saying that this is some kind of elaborate sign that we're about to have a second coming of Jesus or anything to that nature. It's far from that. But Jesus is telling his disciples that it was not far for any of them to know that during these seasons or even to know day by day or hour by hour when his return was actually going to be. I think what Jesus was indicating here was that God is using such things, such as this pandemic, to wake up the world up to this fragility in life, and that there is reality of a divine judgment. These are all the things that are the rock of our foundations, but these are like those birth pains. Jesus says birth pains can't tell you the exact moment of a new birth but they indicate that the time is getting shorter and a new reality is coming. I do think, however, we are wise to hear in this that a divine warning of God is giving to the people on earth. The world we live in is this temporary foundation and all of our foundations at times could be faulty. You know, when I first heard about COVID-19, I thought this would go in a category of near misses but I've grown accustomed to. You hear about the asteroids that come close to the earth, but it always seems to miss, and life goes on. Or you hear about epidemics in other countries and think, our medical system can keep us safe. Or natural disasters in other places that don't directly affect us. But I think now about how something that none of us can even see, something that a month ago or four months ago, none of us were even worrying about that has brought this nation to a screeching halt. Even if the reality ends up not being as bad as some of the predictions, how quickly and easily our whole nation has shut down that just shows us how fragile we are. Many say that regardless of what happens with the medical care of the virus, 
that the economic impacts of the shutdown are going to be staggering. Throughout scripture, we see that God repeatedly uses things like this to wake up the people of the world. For Jacob, God brought him to his knees through a desperate fear for his personal safety. With Moses, he found God through the loss of his career and the breakup of his family that he experienced when he was driven out of Egypt into the wilderness. For the mighty Syrian general Naman, it was the healthcare being diagnosed with leprosy that brought him to safety. And then then there was Nebuchadnezzar. It was the loss of his job and the loss of his sanity. In all these cases, we have God putting themselves flat on their backs. And we love to say that they would be finally looked up in the right direction. But God is saying, wake up, people. Wake up. Do you realize how fragile it is and how helpless you will be if you stand unprepared for the judgment of God? Jesus tells us to, uh, to avoid these false hopes only because many will be offered in our lives. Democrats will say that they're in charge and that things would be better, and then Republicans would oppose that. Or vice versa, the Republicans would say that they need to be in charge with the Democrats opposing it. All of this going back and forth. But as we will revisit the medical systems that we develop vaccines, that we review the protocols for an early containment. Ultimately, all earthly solutions will fail, and we know that. And in the final analysis, we're in that sinking sand. Nothing can deliver us from the sentence of death that we're ultimately under. For a few of us, death may be a long way off, which I hope it is, but we're surrounded by this presence of this plenty that people are dying before our eyes, that we're surrounded by friends and family, and for the majority of us, Sometimes death will be unsudden and it will be unpleasant. But we don't stop and proclaim and we don't stop and we don't stop worshiping. You know, the song that we sang this morning or we had this morning was, My hope is built on nothing less, on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. For many of us, it can be a time of rejoicing that you have a foundation better than anything else life could give. That death cannot take away anything in your life. But this morning I also want us to encourage us to look at a few of those practical things that we should consider in our lives. This is not a time for carelessness or bravery and it's also not a time for panic. We all have a natural bias, and some of us gravitate towards the worst case scenarios. Sometimes those doomsday prophecies that are things that we overreact to. But then others attend to brush it aside and put it to reports of people having hysteria or some kind of Main Street political agenda. And it's probably one of those biases that are avoided to the extremes to listen to counsel. I would say my encouragement for you is to avoid online extremists, particularly those that pander your bias. We know that social media, media really hasn't helped anything in this irony and this age of unpredicted unpredic situations and the access of information. And that during this time of crisis, social media, some media can sometimes spread disinformation versus correct information. I want to say that, that our disposition as a church at this point is to continue to defer to what the CDC and the government tells us to do. Neither getting far ahead of them nor lagging behind them. I know as your pastor as well as your board, we believe that this is why God gave us governing officials that we are going to follow their leads and to follow their guidance. And let me say something to those of you who are feeling young and vibrant and invulnerable that since I know that there are so many reports that we hear that indicate, oh, the young people are not at risk. They're not, they're not really gonna be the spreaders. Well, don't take anything for granted. There are plenty of stories out there of young, healthy people developing serious complications, even dying as a result to contracting the virus. 
Next, even if you are low risk, you should take those precautions for the sake of your neighbors, for the sake of your friends. And as a friend of mine said, I'm taking CDC instructions seriously. Not because I'm afraid of getting it. I'm young, healthy, and I have no fear about the future. But I'm taking COVID-19 seriously because I'm afraid of distributing it. And that came from a young 22 year old young man that I know and I thought it was quite profound words and then as another Christian leader put it out there that to love not fear is the reason we should change our behavior I want to say that in this season we need to move forward in our faith and not backwards in fear there is so much that is happening in the world these days and as a church that you know it wasn't known for stockpiling the food and the ammunition for themselves, but it was that fear of spreading the gifts that weren't to be the gifts. I heard it said that Mother Teresa's legacy was built on hoarding months of supplies for herself and then berating the poor of Calcutta on why they weren't wise as she was. Christian witnesses throughout history have been known for hope and faith and self-sacrifice and imitating a savior who ran towards tragedy, not away from it. God does some of his greatest work in secret, in those mundane places, and we're entering sort of that extension of that Sabbath when most of us would normally be doing something else in our lives. Don't just make it through, but redeem yourself at this time and don't waste your quarantine. Continue with your faith. Continue with the gifts that God brings. There is so much in the world today and as much as that we are quarantined and we're not able to be with each other face to face, the church is still here. The church hasn't closed its doors as many people have alluded or have said throughout these four months. It's just, oh, well, the church is closed, so why, why continue with our faith? The church is never closed. We don't need to be in these four walls to have our faith and to have our church, as you can see, because we're worshiping virtually at this point. The great author, author C.S. Lewis, lived to the, at a point in his life that he lived during the 1960s. Now, for some of you millennials, that's a long time ago, but that was when lots of people were generally afraid that they were going to be destroyed by nuclear weapons. He was once asked how, that, how one could live without fear, knowing that any minute the world could be destroyed. He calmly said, well, what I know is that all of us will die eventually. For the most of us, and for most, that it will be sudden, and for many of us, it will be unpleasant. We may not know when or how death will come, but we do know that it will come for all of us at some point, and it's very likely it will be unexpected and unpleasant. I know that kind of sounds a little morbid, but when you resolve yourself to all of that, you can start to use whatever amount of time you have to move forward whether it's six months or 60 years, we need to embrace life. We need to capitalize on whatever opportunities God puts in front of us each and every moment. I think one of the main questions should not be when and how will I die, but how will I live and how will I do it while I'm alive? Folks, God is putting us up to something. God is leading us into new ways. And we need to go forward with these great expectations as we follow God in this season. We need to continue to be the church. We need to con be, continue to be who we are as Milwaukee Metropolitan Community Church. As we need to be continuing to be the church, we need to keep the parts of the body of the church strong and healthy. Those parts of the body that are strong, that are you, as we said previously over the last several weeks that the body of Christ is made up of many parts, just as this congregation is made up of many, many different parts and those parts are each and every one of you. So as we continue moving forward each and every moment, continue to be the blessings upon yourselves each and every day. So I give you greetings this morning and bring you blessings and prayers to you each and every day. God bless you this morning, Milwaukee Metropolitan Community Church. Amen. Hi, everyone.
This is Chris Meisner, your lay delegate from Milwaukee MCC, and I bring you greetings today from myself, the church board, and Reverend Tory. Uh, I am happy and smiling, although you might not be able to tell because I'm wearing a face mask uh, to keep myself safe and those around me safe, as I'm currently broadcasting from the uh, courtyard of my apartment building. So a little change of scenery for you today. Uh, I hope you guys are all doing well, staying healthy and safe. Uh, to let you know, uh, we just replaced the windows at our church. So uh, thank you to everybody who has been there doing that work and everybody who has contributed to that work being done through uh, special gifts and tithing. So thank you very much so that when uh, it is safe for us to come back to the church, our church is up and running and looking amazing. Um, I cannot believe that we are halfway through the summer already. This has been a very difficult year for me. Uh, in some ways. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, several years ago I was diagnosed with a mild anxiety disorder. So that makes uh, dealing with day-to-day -day things a little more difficult for me from time to time. And uh, this past year has been even more difficult with the pandemic going on and uh, other things going on in the world. So uh, I've been very lucky that uh, my husband Justin is here with me and he's really done an amazing job of making sure I'm okay and taking care of me. But uh, I really miss seeing you guys. You guys always check in with me during the passing of the peace at church and make sure I'm doing okay and uh, greet me and check in on me. And I really miss, I really miss doing that right now. So since we can't get together in person for worship right now, we're doing a virtual passing of the peace. Uh, if you'd like to contribute, you can send a two sentence greeting to our uh, email at info at, at milmcc.org. And uh, we will send out your greeting in a future email. Uh, I'd like to leave you today with a Bible verse I found, uh, Proverbs 12:25, which says, anxiety weighs down the heart but a kind word cheers it up. So whether you're feeling depressed or anxious with the current state of the world right now, know that we're here for you and please feel free to reach out to us. We are a church and we are here for you. Uh, until next time, uh, take care, stay safe, and God bless. As we come to the time of offering this morning, we give thanks to our God who is faithful. We rely on the words that pastor preaches to give us strength. And we pray as the pastor does and as the board does that through this online worship that you are fed, that you are fed by the words of God and by the words of pastor and that it may give you strength as we go week to week in these uncertain times. We thank God for his faithfulness, but we thank you for your faithfulness as well as you continue to support our small but mighty congregation. We thank you for all that you do in way of giving and in way of praying for your church and for your pastor and for each other. We ask that you take a moment this morning and give your gifts and your tithes. You can certainly continue to mail those to the church address with the envelopes that were provided to you, or you can go online through our website or through Facebook to PayPal or make a donation directly from the website. We wish you all health and strength and also mental health and strength. And we give you a big hug from all of us here who help produce this service on Sundays. And we ask that you take a moment to give everyone a virtual hug this morning. God bless you all. As we come to the table this morning, if you haven't already done so, I invite you to go and get something that represents your communion elements this morning. But as we come to God's table this morning, we come at this time that we know that we worship God and we are a part of the gifts that God brings us each and every day. We know that this table is God's table, but it's a blessing that God gives to each and every one of us. We know that that night that Jesus was in the upper room with all of his disciples, as they gathered for that last meal, Jesus took bread at the end of the meal taking it and blessing it and breaking it and saying to each and every one to take it to eat for this is my body that has been given for each and every one of you and as often as you eat from this do so in remembrance of me likewise at the end of the meal jesus took the cup from the table took that cup and he blessed it and he said to everybody to 
take this cup as this is the new covenant of my life and this is poured out for each and every one of you and for the forgiveness of all people's sins and for everything that has happened in the world. But to drink from this often and as often as you drink from this, to do so in remembrance of me. So as we come to prayer, we know that when we are the way we are, that we take the gifts of the Spirit that size and that the bread is shaped for the healing to unfold the world to us, the word to us. That the feeding of us of God's hopes until we see the injustices over time and in the cup that is prepared for the pouring that it is filled with the light so that we can journey into the shadows of our world, searching for those thrown aside by society. But we know that when time ends and when there is nothing more to say, that we will be singing our praises to you, God, forever and ever, God and community, holy and one. Amen. <laughs> heard in the closing words to our song revive us again God as we go out into the world this day and as our worship comes to an end this morning let God continue to revive each and every one of us be that revival of life into the world so now as we go out into the world through God's tender mercies and protection that is given to each and every one of us we go out into the world through God the Creator God the Savior and God the Holy Spirit God bless you all